Welcome to the Chef's Kitchen. I'm your host, Nicole Gaffney. We're here today with Chef Pat O'Malley of The Hungry Pigeon in South Philly. Welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Of course, thanks for being here today. What are we making? Uh, today we're making a rhubarb and apple pie, which is a great uh, introduction to spring uh, as apples sort of start to leave for the winter and rhubarb is one of the first products that comes in. It's also like a nice, beautiful red tart thing to welcome in the spring. Awesome, let's get started. All right, uh, so first we're gonna get started on making the pie dough, um, which uh, I don't do anything crazy with pie dough. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a mixture of all-purpose flour and pastry flour, okay. which gives it a little bit more of a tender crust. Nice. But um, some people don't have pastry flour in their pantries, so uh, all all-purpose flour will work fine. I like to use King Arthur flour just because it's very accessible and mm -hmm. um, very consistent and stuff like that. Yeah, a lot of people don't really realize that flour can have that much of an impact on a dish. Yeah, exactly. So generally if you're using uh, a pastry flour sort of thing like that, you do not want to use cake flour. Mm -hmm. um, but pastry flour like that, um, uh, you just need to be careful if you're using all all-purpose, you may need to adjust your water a little bit okay. because it has a little bit more uh, absorption. Good to know. Yeah, you can do this by hand too, but mm -hmm. uh, we'll do it on the stand mixer today just for ease. Nice. Um, and the dry mix is just a combination of the both flours and salt and uh, start to mix that up and then we're going to start with the cold cube butter that's going in. I have to comment on the butter because I just tasted some but the color alone tells me that it's unique. The butter that we use is mm. a European style butter. It's delicious. Um, what that means is that it's uh, more cultured so it has kind of a, a more like a a yogurty kind of cheesy yeah, kind of taste. Yeah, kind of tangy. Yeah, they're also drier butter, which means that um, you'll end up with a flakier crust because the, the, well, butter, the butter itself has less water in it. Um, we get our butter uh, locally, but the brands that I would recommend would be Plugra mm -hmm. or Kerrygold is another one, mm -hmm. which are available in uh, most supermarkets. So we're basically gonna work this um, together mm -hmm. uh, on a pretty low speed. And again, if you can imagine you were doing this by hand, um, you would just be working it in until the dough starts to become kind of crumbly. It should only take a couple minutes. You wanna sort of get the pieces down to like I say like walnut size pieces. Okay, um, so still pretty big. Yeah, and the the main thing that a lot of people do, so this dough is going to be is going to look kind of dry, especially at this stage. Mm -hmm. um, even when we add the water in, it's going to look sort of not fully mixed. Okay. The fact is, the act of rolling out the dough really is what finishes making the dough. Mm -hmm. Finish finishes kneading the dough. Okay. And so you'll end up with a much flakier thing if you don't over mix it in the right. first part. Right. So you want to try not to work it. Too yeah, much. exactly. So you can see here now that most of the uh, butter has been absorbed. It's like a nice yeah. crumbly mix. And if you sort of look at it with your hand, it sort of starts to pack together here mm -hmm. like this. Looks like it has almost a sandy texture to yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. And that's so it sort of just starts to come together like that. Mm -hmm. And then that means we're going to add a little bit of water here. You want the water to be uh, as cold as possible. Okay. Uh, it doesn't have to have ice in it, but right. um, just that make sure it's cold water. Not warm. And, yeah, exactly. And I put a little squeeze of lemon juice in it, which is kind of like, I don't know, like a grandma kind of thing. Yeah. It, um, it, it sort of helps keep the dough tender, and it, in my opinion, it also prevents the dough from oxidizing. Hmm. Um, oxygen can actually have kind of a negative impact on things like butter. Right. Um, it'll, and it like changes the color somewhat. Oh, how about that? So yeah, so just a little squeeze of that. Some people use white vinegar. Uh -huh. um, but again, like, you know, pastry, uh, pastry in general, like this pie dough, um, you are looking for basically uh, a very, rich dough mm -hmm. that's also very dry gotcha. and that's what's going to end up with um you know a nice flaky thing so you can see here how the the dough is sort of uh looks almost like clay like kind right shaggy. yeah exactly but it's still sort of like not a uniform texture mm -hmm. and i always like with any sort of doughs like this is to stop it at this point again like not letting the machine take it all the way right. um, you'll get a little bit more of a delicate uh product if you basically stop it then and finish it by hand you just have more control right. you know i can really like fold it over and kind of knead it together just like that mm -hmm. and you can even some people if you want to take it out onto the table just give yourself a little bit more room mm -hmm. and the idea of like oh this doesn't look mixed all the way but in fact all these little swirls of butter going through there is actually what you want nice so then the best thing to do with this would be to just wrap it in plastic wrap 
uh, and then keep it in the fridge for, I would say, you know, an hour, two hours, mm -hmm. just to chill it up really, really nice before you go to work with it. So you want to keep everything kind of cold. Yeah, exactly. Process. Yep. Okay. So we'll chill this down and then we'll start getting going on the filling. We'll return with more from The Chef's Kitchen. We're back with more from The Chef's Kitchen. We have some actual beautiful rhubarb here from it Pennsylvania, um, which a lot of people don't aren't familiar with what it looks like in this state. <laughs> um, just be careful you don't ever want to eat the leaves because yes. uh, they are poisonous. Great, great tip <laughs> They'll make to put you out very there. sick. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I'll have you starting uh, breaking down some of this for us. Okay. And you can see here, like, you basically just want kind of a small dice. Mm -hmm. And I just chop off the ends here. And you can trim off everything but that little very end bit is actually, you know, totally edible. A lot of great. people end up lobbing that whole thing off, right. which isn't really... Not necessary. Yeah. So um, again, you know, some of these are, they come in varied sizes. You can, you know, you just want kind of a chunky thing. Rhubarb does break down mm -hmm. uh, pretty quickly as you're cooking it. So yeah. you don't want it to be so small that it just becomes mush. Okay. All right, so why don't you get going on that? And, just do the uh, one? Yeah, okay. we'll do one of those. And then in the meantime, I'll mix together these other things. So the remaining ingredients here is actually really, really simple. Again, we have uh, the rhubarb here and we have some uh, apples here. These are, Gala apples, mm. um, Gala's Fuji's, yeah, exactly, perfect. So Gala's Fuji, you want a like a firm flesh Beautiful apple, apples. yeah. So uh, when we're breaking down apples and stuff like this, I don't peel them. I always like at the restaurant we try to basically use the whole yeah. product of everything. I'm a skin um, fan. Yeah, we're a mm -hmm. very like low waste um, kind of restaurant, and mm -hmm. so. I feel like the peels, you know, end yeah. up just going in the trash, which is for no reason, you know. Exactly. They also do technically uh, add some pectin to the oh, fi the okay. filling because the it, it is in the skins and stuff so like that. So it helps to kind of thicken it up. Exactly. So um, and when breaking these down, a lot of people sometimes approach cutting an apple uh, and sort of chopping it right down to the core. You'll be better off if you actually cut it down into sort of slabs mm. like this and cutting around the apple like that so that you already start with kind of a square shape. So you just get rid of that core. Yeah, exactly. And so then you can just go right down here and chop these down like this. Well, I feel that's like a that's fun a, technique. Yeah, I feel like that's yeah. an easier way. Totally. Basically like getting it into a square shape so that you can get a square shape. So if you want to just work on that and yeah. then I'll start mixing the rest of the ingredients together. So we're basically going to take all of the fruit here and then the remaining ingredients which are brown sugar, white sugar mix. So a little bit of sugar, brown sugar, the salt and the cinnamon are gonna go in here. Again, like, you know, I'm kind of a purist on what uh, things taste like. If I'm gonna make a pie with apples and rhubarb, I really wanna taste that more. So I'm yeah. generally pretty light on spices and things like that. I like to use like little, um, little bits of things that sort of bring out characteristics of the fruit rather than it, uh, you know, overpowering. Yeah, you just wanna kind of spice. enhance the natural flavors. Exactly. So this is all going to get mixed together, uh, and then the, I, I would recommend letting this sit for a little bit of time, okay, just so that it basically gives an opportunity for the uh, fruit to release some of its liquid. Nice. Um, once that's done, we're, we can throw this right into the pan. We're going to pretend that it has sat for a little bit longer than this. Okay. And then it can go right onto the heat. So you don't need to preheat the pan at all? No, 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 you actually don't want to because okay. you want this to sort of all come up sort mm. of gently. Uh, and then we're gonna put a couple tablespoons of butter in here too, which basically just, uh, again, just adds richness to it. You know, butter kind of makes everything better. taste a bit better. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it sort of just helps round it out. Okay. So we can probably turn this up a little bit. Yeah, so this is gonna basically cook until it starts to release some of the liquid here. And then what I like to do is actually take some of the liquid from here and mix that with the cornstarch rather than like adding okay. additional water to right. it, you know, like that. Let's use that for the Yeah, the exactly. Slurry. So this will start to break down. Because the fruit will release a good amount of liquid. Yeah, a lot cooks. actually, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, both rhubarb and apples, uh, especially rhubarb, are very high in, uh, they're very high in water. It's yeah. what they mostly are consisted of. So you can see there's already some liquid coming out of here. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and what we can do is sort of just actually just spoon some of this out. There you go. Yeah. So tell me about the hungry pigeon. 
Uh, Hungry Pigeon is the brainchild of me and my uh, <laughs> partner, Scott. It's, it's our idea of, you know, kind of an old timey restaurant or like a diner, like an all day, um, just sort of brought into the current times yeah. um, from a uh, sustainability standpoint, mm -hmm. from a, uh, you know, everything baked from scratch or right. made from scratch standpoint. Very seasonal. Yeah, very seasonal, mm -hmm. um, but also very, um, you know, we always say we're a, a comfort food restaurant, you know? Yeah. So uh, we've been open for a little over two years now. Congratulations. Uh, thank you very much. Um, We've been uh, the number one restaurant in uh, Philadelphia Magazine for the last year. So nice, that's been kind congratulations. Of yeah. um, and you said we've continued to uh, sort of grow and expand as we've gone along. You know, we've what started as us originally just, you know, producing a couple dozen croissants and stuff a day <laughs> ended up turning into uh, now we make about 20 some loaves of bread a day. Wow. And, and about, you know, I guess six to ten dozen pastries and stuff. Wow, so, so you really are doing everything in house. Yeah, everything. Nice. Pastas, uh, ice creams. Um, I mean, we make our own creme fraiche, we make our own. Wow. Yeah, so, and then everything that we don't make ourselves, we uh, basically find the best producer of it. We'll return with more from The Chef's Kitchen. We're back with more from The Chef's Kitchen. So you can see, so I just added in the cornstarch here, and then this is going to keep cooking down until it thickens up. Okay. And do you want to keep the fruit still kind of al dente, or do you want to really cook it down? Uh, so, stage? yeah, the I would say we're going to cook it halfway. Mm -hmm. um, so the apples are the main thing that you want to uh, break down a little bit. The rhubarb won't have any problem breaking down. Okay. Um, you're mainly just cooking the the apples out because they're going to be, they're going to take the longest to cook. Great. Um, yeah. And so as this cooks, actually, we actually probably can get started on our pie shell over here. Uh, so we have some of our finished pie dough here, mm -hmm. which we can start to roll out. Um, That's a heck of a rolling pin. I yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, well, they, yeah, I guess I, <laughs> maybe it's my, it's proportionate to the person yeah, that's doing it. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, so yeah, so I like to use these aluminum pie pans, uh, Very just old cause, school. yeah, exactly. Um, I would say you can use a ceramic one by all means. Uh, I would not use the like disposable kind of ones. Okay. Uh, How about glass? Yeah. Glass is fine. Okay. Exactly. Um, they're all, basically it comes down to just being a better conductor of heat. Mm. Um, that's what you want, uh, to get a really nice solid bottom. Those thin pans just don't really ever get hot enough yeah. to, uh, actually so cook you get a soggy thing. crust. Yeah, exactly. Even like cast irons work okay. To be oh honest. yeah. I do it right yeah. in your cast iron pan. That's very old, old timey. Yeah, for sure. So don't, uh, don't be, again, don't be as concerned about the edges cracking a little bit. All right. And, um, again, like you want to use. I always say, like, use as much flour as you need, but not any more than you need. Okay. <laughs> Great tip. <laughs> yeah. Um, because, like, I, and, like, I think what a lot of people do is sort of another, like, sort of technique is they sort of drop it on, and you'll see that I sort of cast yeah. it over the side of it so that it sort of gets a little bit more of, like, like an swoosh. even mist right. kind of thing rather than... I like than, that. Flour yeah. mist. I did not use the whole portion of dough. I'm going to mm -hmm. re reserve some of it for the, the top. Oh, okay. Because um, we're going to do a lattice crust here. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, I always like, especially with something like rhubarb, where it really has such a pretty look mm -hmm. that you want to uh, be able to show that off. Nice. So what other types of desserts do you have on the menu at Hungry Pigeon? Um, we generally uh, sort of bounce between uh, like traditional European style stuff and then traditional... Um, I'm going to give this just a quick stir. Okay. You can see this is starting to thicken up here. Yeah, big time. Everything's yeah. really breaking down. And it should get sort of shiny and glossy mm. looking. This is just about there. Cool. So yeah, uh, like I was saying, we do a lot of uh, French style stuff, which sort of um, harkens to the time I was at Balthazar, um, which oh, I really fell in love with that um, that style of pastry, like Austrian things, soccer tort, strudel. Um, mm -hmm. I, I tend towards the classics in that sort of way. Um, and then at times sort of like, I guess like modernizing them or like Americanizing them okay. with a little bit of a different, whether it's ingredients or something like that. And then things like pies, uh, coconut cake, uh, mm. carrot cake, things yeah. that are like, you know, truly American. And yeah. then we sort of do like, I don't know, kind of oddball other stuff too, like 
s'mores and creamsicle sundaes and stuff like that. Still like iconic American desserts. Though. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Fun. I mean, we I, I like to th we like to refer to the restaurant as an American restaurant, um, but that you know the American table really uh, touches on a lot of different cultures, which is kind Absolutely. of the point. Right. <laughs> um, so again, like using that sort of comfort uh, food term, you know, like that is that means different things to different people. I, it definitely does. So you can see here. So I sort of uh, sheeted this out to. Uh, about a quarter of an inch, I'd say. Mm -hmm. I like the bottom crust is going to be a little bit thicker than the top crust because it's really there to hold in all that uh, right. that that wet stuff. Whereas the top crust, you want to be pretty thin so that it bakes quickly. That's what a lot of people do the same thickness for the top and the bottom, and you end up with one of them not being cooked properly. That's a really good tip. Yeah. So now that our filling here is done, you can basically take this out and spoon it into a shallow dish. Because you uh, want that to cool down before exactly. you put it into the pie. Exactly. So I like to let this cool down, um, you know, which goes pretty quick. Just pour it, put it into a shallow baking dish or something like that and pop it in the fridge for, you know, 45 minutes or so to cool that Can down. it still be a little bit warm or do you want uh, it, like, No, you really, really want it to be totally okay. cold because it's going to, you want this to go into the filling, uh, I mean, sorry, into the pie and not start to melt anything at all. Mm. Great tip. So now that we have this ready to go, this is some of the finished filling right here. Great which you can just spoon right in. You can see how it sets up. We'll return with more from The Chef's Kitchen. We're back with more from The Chef's Kitchen. So we've got this in now, and then uh, we're gonna do our lattice top on top of this. So I actually have a little piece of the dough that I prepared earlier. If you're nervous about rolling out the dough or anything like that, Roll out your dough and then pop it in the fridge, let it chill before you do any cutting or shaping or anything okay. like that, and that'll be way easier. Little insurance. Do. Yeah, exactly. So um, I use about eight one inch strips for a pie like this. This is a nine inch pie pan. It's usually pretty thick pieces. Yeah, I like a, I sort of like them. I think it's just got that like classic yeah. shape. And I'm using a ravioli cutter, which sort of gives it that groove, uh, that groovy sort of look. Yeah, it's fun. Um, you could also just cut it, you know, with a pizza cutter or something like that. I like to use this rather than a knife just because you end up, it's like kind of easier to work with. Right. So we've got our strips there. And a again, little... look at the color of that egg. You can just see the quality of the yolks. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. They actually, um, it, they'll sort of change over the course of the year, too. Do they? Because of Depending like on the what, seasons yeah, they what, feed. what they're eating right. and stuff. So a little bit of egg on the outside. And then we're going to do our lattice top here. So I like to sort of space it out. Okay. And then basically you start with four, and then you're going to alternate going the other direction, uh -huh. right? So two back, and then flip the other way, across. It looks so much more complicated than yeah, this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I know. It's like, it's, it's literally just you're, just, you're just switching two for two at a time. It's like weaving a rug. Yeah, exactly. Not that I've ever done that. But. <laughs> <laughs> you kidding me? <laughs> you're obviously not from Pennsylvania. Yeah, I know. I look like an expert rug weaver. <laughs> <laughs> so once you have your lat your perfect lattice rug uh, done, um, we can uh, basically just crimp this down, uh, press okay. this down over the side just to attach those two layers together. Mm -hmm. And then just using a paring knife, you can just trim off a little bit of that excess. All right. And now do you fold that under or you just kind of leave it? Yeah, no, no. So like I'm going to just, I like to sort of roll it up into a little bit of kind of a rope and then. Oh, okay. And then give it. Although a lot of people, if you're a if you're an, a pie enthusiast, as um, I am, yeah, you uh, <laughs> you know people sort of have their own styles of crimping. Uh huh. Um, so th at this point, we're now in the range of you can do, you know, I've seen Pinterest has provided all sorts <laughs> yeah. of different uh, pie crimping techniques. So basically, <laughs> you're just I like to roll it out and sort of just give it a little bit of a pressure here. Okay. Just to sort of bring it together, mm -hmm. so you don't end up with two thick of an edge. So once we've got our sort of edge like this, I like to just dip my finger a little bit and I just do kind of a little pinch. Oh, I like that. Yeah, it just sort of creates like a little, and when you're doing your pie edge, you want it to be, at least with, I know with this pie dough, um, is you want the design to look actually rather dramatic because oh, right. it will, uh, 
it'll sort of soften as it bakes. So you get mm. a little bit more show if it's got a nice frilliness there. That's a great tip. Yeah. And then we're gonna just brush this with a little cream. What's the, the, the cream do? So I like to use cream rather than egg because it just sort of, it doesn't really make a, uh, it's, it browns it up nicely, but it almost sort of keeps it more like a biscuit kind of top rather than right. a- Right, like the egg gets glossy. Yeah, kind exactly, of. Okay. yeah. So it is like a different kind of effect. Um, I just like the, the result of, again, like this, this dough, in my opinion, kind of is more like a biscuit dough than a, okay. um, you know, like a, like a croissant or a brioche or something like that. So I like to keep okay. it with the cream. So once you're brushed like this, that's what ready to go. Temperature? Uh, 375 in a conventional <laughs> oven uh, works well. It's gonna bake for about an hour. You want the filling to be really nice and bubbly and for the top mm. to be crusty and dark. Make sure you let it cool for like a good solid hour. That's another thing. So a little whipped cream on here. Yum. And let's have a taste let's do here. It. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Thanks for being on the show. Don't be shy. Whoop, don't steal my piece. Mmm. As a pie enthusiast, it gets my seal of approval. Nice. Really good. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, likewise. I love the tartness from the rhubarb and the apple. It's really nice. Perfect for spraying. I love it. I'll be back at the Hungry Pigeon, like, I don't know, a couple hours to get another piece. Yeah, and this is on the, this will be on the menu now, um, you know, I mean, basically all the until time now, until we start getting anything more out of season. The, uh, coming in from the farms. Perfect. Thanks so much for joining us today. This is great. Thank you very much. Come back and see us again. Oh, this is a lot of fun. Uh, thank you guys for having me out. Uh, I'm glad I was able to show people a great way to use rhubarb.